Hey, Grandpa. It's Levi. Hey. You know how the other day I, I was telling you that I wanted to make a video just telling the story of your life? Uh-huh. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that'd be all right, yeah. Give it a try. Ready? Okay. Dad, could you state your full name? Charles Bernard Riley. My birthday is February 12th, 1930. I was born in a hospital in Beach Grove, Indiana. I was almost born on the elevator. I came so fast. My mother had a very comfortable life living with my father. They both got married at 20 years old. They were married 14 years before my brother was born. They married 17 years before I was born. And then a little less than two years later, my father died. I don't remember my father at all. My father died from a kidney failure. It was called Bright's disease. It was very quick. He took his shoes off on Christmas and his feet swelled up and he was dead and buried New Year's, which left my mother in the lurch. Two little kids, depression, and um, no, no uh, education to speak of. She had an eighth grade education but you never want to try to cheat her out of anything. She was sharp as a tack mathematically. If you can picture the period of time, it was at the height of the depression. Here she is, a single mother with two little kids. She had to go to work. Naturally, she was closer to her own brothers and sisters. And that's why we came to California, because her family, all brothers and sisters, were out here. We came to California in 1936. I didn't live with my mother until I was almost 12. We lived with the different aunts and uncles. I lived in boarding, they called them boarding houses. Uh, I remember living in this one. There was 12 of the kids. Today it would be comparable to uh, foster care, foster home. I started in the ninth grade. I played football, basketball. I ran track, and I was in gymnastics. Another bunch of us, high school, went to high school together and all. We piled in the car and we went around town and we see a sign in the window, help wanted. One of us would go in and get some applications, drive over another help wanted, we get another application. Lo and behold, at the end of the day, we ended up in front of the recruiting station. I was apprentice seaman in the Navy Reserve my senior year in high school. I got discharged from the Navy Reserve and I list, enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. And I was in the Air Force for four years. When I was stationed at uh, uh, March Air Force Base up there in Riverside, uh, I was the night electrician. I was the only one working at night. And on the flip side, I was the only one off during the day. I, I figured I might as well go to school. And I went down to Riverside JC and I, I ro rolled and I was taking 18 units and working 40 hours a week on top of it. I was standing in line at the cafeteria and, and lo and behold, there's your mother. She's in line. She told me the story that she just wrecked her dad's car and she's gonna have to find her own way to school. And it so happened that I went right by her house on the way to school. So I told her, well, I'll stop and pick you up. 
and uh, I should have kept going. I should have just kept going. Joanne Carolyn Knutson. Little by little, we, we, I gave her a ring and we got engaged and then we got married July 19th, 1952. She was 19 when we got married for one month and I kept killing her, I married a teenager. After we was married, I had bought a home for $10,050. But we didn't have a thing to put in it. Our so-called honeymoon was sleeping on the floor in a sleeping bag. Being young and naive and inexperienced, these things never entered your mind. I bought a house. Well, what the hell you put in it? Where, where, where you go from there? You know, this house is number four. We moved in the weekend before Thanksgiving in 1965. The house I could afford, it had enough room around us, and it had enough space for all the family. We had eight children in 10 years. Having a great, a big family put more strain on finances, and in order to meet the finances, I had to work a lot of overtime in order to uh, pay the bills. There was. One paycheck, I had 101 and a quarter hours overtime on it. And that was the fire up in Barona in 1960. It was a nice paycheck, but my eyes were so bloodshot I could hardly see out of them. I worked 36 hours straight. That was all part of raising the family. I chose the phone company because when I was in the service, I went through electrical school and I enjoyed the work. I started out as an installer. Then I went into repair. Then I transferred, that job transferred to construction and the title was called A Cutter. And that's the work I was doing up until the time I retired. I gave them the phone company 39 years before I retired. And when I retired, I was the oldest climbing lineman in San Diego County, still climbing poles at 60 years old. I chose to go back to school because they offered classes that I enjoyed. I very much enjoyed uh, plants, propagation of plants. And so I started taking the classes and then I got all these units built up behind me. And then your mom said, well, why don't you go for your degree? Your grandkids would look up at that as an inspiration for them. Okay, so I had to take all these other classes and I ended up with my two-year degree after eight years, taking one class at a time at night after working all day. I graduated from Cuyamaca when I was 59 and I retired when I was 60. My retirement years began with being able to sleep in late. Didn't have to get up at 4.45. Your mom smoked for a while and <clears throat> it affected her lungs and she ended up with what they call COPD, chronic operative heart failure. It took a toll on her lungs. And so when she passed away, it was from lung and heart. Looking back, I think we had 63 good years. I've been very happy with the outcome of our family. Several of us have written letters, notes, memories, and they're in that basket. <laughs> A few favorite memories, riding in your tower truck at home on your lunch break, working in the yard with you, grocery shopping at White Front Store, 
filling up about five shopping carts of food, the gold painted walnuts on the Christmas tree when you didn't have enough money for gifts, your amazing athletic ability to do a handstand on a chair at the age of 50. What a stud, Dad. <laughs> Dad, I never forget how patient you were when you taught me how to drive a stick shift in our old truck on Flume Road. Thank you for tolerating the whiplash you, you received. Dad, I got my love of the beach from you. You always amazed me how you would body surf the big waves and make it look so easy. I always bragged about how you enjoyed Bobby surfing in your 70s. There is no one quite like you, Dad, and never will be. Grandpa, you've shown me the joy of watching a seed grow. You've taught me that with love, care, and patience, you can sow your own happiness. You taught us to always love, get along, help others, and have a strong faith. Your faith in God was important to you, and you taught me about that by taking me to church every week. You encouraged me to get back on my feet in my times of despair and reminded me that I had value as a person no matter what came. What a difference you made in our world, Dad. This photo of you and Grandma Riley make me smile, Dad. You both look so happy dancing together. She thought the world of you and loved you so very much. And I know you felt the same about her. So thank you for all of your hard work, sacrifice, and burden that you and Grandma overcame to create the family dynamic that we have. I could be biased, but I believe that the Riley family is the best family I've ever encountered. This is all thanks to you and Grandma. P.S. It will cost you a quarter. <laughs> The end of life is death. You begin life, you go through a journey, and then you die. And what do you do in this journey? If you can do something good with your life, not only for yourself, but for others. And that's it. Try to, to help your fellow man. So if you can help one another, here, there, or wherever, the old man upstairs, he knows. I had a great wife, a great family. Thank you. I've been so blessed, so very blessed. Are we still on the air? Still live, yep. Get my good side. <laughs> yeah. You're a movie star. Did you ever think? <laughs> that was my problem, I never did think. <laughs> Cost a quarter. Dad, we just appreciate you taking the time for this. This is pretty Oh, I, 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 my time's pretty valuable, <laughs> I'll tell you. I had to pencil you in. Oh my God, I still got a stack. Are we there yet? It's a shame I had eight kids, God. Boy, we'll be here till Christmas. Yep, yep, do we da, do we da, do we da. Kind of quick questions, just fun, icebreaker type questions. We'll start with some of those. At my age, nothing's quick. Grandpa, do we need to bring the makeup artist in? No, I'm good enough as it is. Grandpa, do you have any favorite muscle tricks? Oh, I, muscle control? 